I'm Jaden Wozni taking a look back at the biggest news story of 2023 in the central Okanagan, the McDougal Creek wildfire. Imagine seeing your own home reduced to nothing but ashes. The memories, the keepsakes, and the family heirlooms gone forever. And yet Brolin says during this incredibly difficult time, he's seeing his community grow stronger. Scattered showers have been recorded in parts of Lake Country today, and while that is a good sign for those on the front lines battling the Grouse Complex wildfire, the reality is many are still patiently waiting to go home. Jaden Wozni, Global News, Lake Country. Sears is now working with a new council. Council is expected to meet February 20th to discuss future court dates, and it is expected that Sears will make an appearance via video call. Jaden Wozni, Global News, Kelowna. I understand that the public is concerned. You know, so am I when we see that. It, it takes you back to the first night. The sky in West Kelowna is clear today, but yesterday afternoon, a large plume of smoke above the city caused quite the scare for some residents as photos and videos began to circulate on social media. Many people not realizing the smoke was caused by a controlled burn in the Hidden Creek area. This plant ignition was mapped to be about 20 to 35 hectares in size, but just due to favorable on-site conditions, the operation progressed uh, more north and more northeast to encompass an area that was approximately 146 hectares. West Kelowna's Fire Chief Jason Brolin says residents shouldn't panic if they see smoke. It's actually something we can expect to see more of in the weeks ahead as controlled burns continue. We will see more of it. Um, and, you know, we need people to understand that it is part of uh, securing the community from this wildfire that is going to be with us likely until winter. Another planned ignition to burn off roughly 350 hectares of unburnt fuel is scheduled to take place today around the northwest and west side of Carrot Mountain. If it is conducted today, which it most likely will because on-site conditions are favorable, will be highly visible to nearby communities as well as commuters along Highway 97. On Tuesday evening, some West Side Road residents who were under an evacuation order were notified that they would be able to check on their home and grab some much needed belongings. But just hours later, a handful of properties were excluded from that list as officials say the area remains unsafe. Things like access, um, ensuring that the roadways are there, um, ensuring that we can protect the people uh, who do go back uh, in their homes while they're there. Uh, and making sure that overhead hazards, be they uh, power infrastructure, trees, that type of thing are all properly addressed. As of today, 405 properties in the central Okanagan are still under an evacuation order, and 122 of those properties are within the city of West Kelowna. Jaden Wozni, Global News, West Kelowna. 42-year-old Lawrence Williams arrested back in May of 2021 for the second-degree murder of his roommate Thomas Chadwick was in court Monday morning for the start of his trial. During opening remarks, Crown Counsel Trevor Seacott said he will provide a roadmap of evidence to the jurors that showed Williams had been renting a bedroom in the basement of a home on Sexsmith Road for several months when he was evicted by the landlord who wanted to move his girlfriend in. According to Seacott, Williams' relationship with Chadwick and landlord Cornell Fisher had then started to deteriorate in the days before Chadwick was found dead. On May 29th, Fisher requested police assistance to evict Williams, and he, Chadwick, and Fisher's girlfriend began packing up Williams' belongings. Williams, however, left the home before they could finish, according to Seacott. Williams' belongings were placed in a pickup truck outside of the house and covered with a tarp. He didn't return until the following night, though the belongings remained in the pickup truck. Later that evening, Fisher went outside to check on his car before going to bed, Seacott said. He discovered Chadwick lying face down at the bottom of the front steps with a pool of blood around his head. Fisher told police later that he saw three vehicles parked in the driveway, all of which had had their windshields broken. He also saw what he believed to be blood on the tarp that covered Mr. Williams' belongings in the back of the pickup truck. Paramedics and police officers were called immediately to the house. Chadwick was found with significant injuries to his head and face and was pronounced dead at the scene. Seacott said blood-stained pieces of decorative wood block along with black framed glasses were found near his body. 
The Crown alleges that Williams and Chadwick got into a fight. Seacott said that he would present evidence that Chadwick was bludgeoned with a piece of wood used for decorative edging. Seacott added that the jury should expect to hear evidence from police officers, Fisher and his girlfriend, as well as forensic efforts. Surveillance video from nearby businesses is also expected to be shown to highlight Williams' movements in the time before and after the death. Jaden Wozni, Global News, Kelowna. There's just no other way of putting it. It's not an exaggeration. She saved my life. Jerry Wagner was set to fly back to Philadelphia from Kelowna on the morning of June 3rd, but when he arrived at the airport, he was informed his airline was facing some technical problems. All my Air Canada flights have been canceled because of a IT crash the day before. Hoping to get on the next available flight home, Wagner says the Air Canada employee working the desk took charge and created a whole new itinerary with new flights and new connecting cities. It got me back to Philadelphia at the same time that my original itinerary would have gotten me back. And this is significant, Jaden. The following morning, Wagner suffered a massive heart attack. He says he is eternally grateful for the Air Canada employee and her willingness to get him back home to his wife safely. 99% blockage in the left-hand side of my heart that if she had not gotten me back to Philly when she did, I would have died on a plane or in a hotel room. There's just no question about it. Wagner is hoping that by going public with his story, he'll be able to find who he calls his Air Canada angel and thank her for going above and beyond. I'm beginning to wonder if she was real, if this was just an angel sent to me that morning. But uh, hopefully with this and uh, maybe we'll find her. And I, and I just want to thank her. I would just love to meet her again and, and tell her what she did, because I'm sure all she thinks she did is her job, but she did more than her job. Kelowna International Airport CEO Sam Samadar says he is truly touched by Wagner's story, adding he isn't surprised that the Air Canada employee did what she did to get Wagner home as quickly as possible. It warms my heart. You know, we uh, work as one campus. Uh, that's what we uh, preach at the airport. And we're all here to support each other to make sure that our customers, our guests that are using our facilities are well taken care of. Now that he's been given a second shot at life, Wagner says he has chosen a healthier lifestyle and vows to make every day count. It's bizarre, but a heart attack might have been the best thing that ever happened to me. Um, exercising, uh, walking, uh, and just appreciating life uh, a lot more than I ever did before, quite frankly. Jaden Wozni, Global News, Kelowna.